Hello there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and this is the third in the series today on Daniel Smith watercolors. I'm going to talk about the Primatech paints and some of their properties. But before I do, let me just give you a disclaimer, which is that out of the paints that you see here, the ones on the left are the ones I've invested in. So I've spent quite a bit of money on these and already loved them. And then Daniel Smith came alongside and partnered with me to provide more paints so that I could test some things out for you and share them with you. My opinions in these videos are still my own. The Primatech paints are 37 or 38 of the colors within the Daniel Smith line that are made from these natural minerals. I am so amazed that they can get paint out of these natural minerals. A lot of paints are synthetic, a lot of colors are, but these are all natural from the actual rocks. And this is a set of six. It's a starter set that you can get and just try out a few of them and see what the properties are that they have. A lot of them will have granulation to them that is unique to these kinds of paints. Others will have more of a glittery look. You can mix these with all the other paints that you use. So you can get just whatever colors you want if you like just the glittery look. I'll tell you which ones have some of that glitter in them. But I'm gonna run through and just do some swatching. This is with heavy pigment and less water so you can see what they look like pretty full strength and uh, with just a little bit of blending as it goes down that one I put a, a little too much so I was struggling with trying to get enough water in there to get it to move but I wanted to see what they look like and I also wanted to see the glitter content when it's heavy color versus when it's light color so now I'm going in with a lot more water and just really soft washes. So you can see you get a really soft look with these things as well. You don't have to just use them all heavy and that sort of thing. And then after they dried, I wanted to be able to compare how much granulation there is when it's light color and heavy color. And, you know, do you get more glitter when it's heavier or when it's lighter? And we'll take a look at that in just a second after it dries. But this is the whole collection of Primatex as far as I know. And I will have this chart on my blog so you can check it out. But what I wanted to point out which ones are the glittery ones. So let's kind of take a, a nice close look in here so you can see what the shimmer and shine looks like on just some of them. So the red fuchsite genuine has some sparkle in it. I had a heck of a time trying to get the sparkle to show. The bronzite is gorgeous. And right next to it is the burnt bronzite absolutely beautiful colors with lots of sparkle and as I said you can mix these with other colors so uh, there's a number of uses I can see for a lot of these and here's the amethyst this is the one that's in the starter set so you'll get glitter on that one there's fuchsite which is a very pale greenish teal kind of color well, I'm sure it's called fuchsite instead of greenish teal <laughs> but this one's kyanite and I want to use that to do some night skies and the Sugalite or Sugalite would be great for a cloudy sky, I think. This is the chart we just painted, and the Hematite is the heavily granulated one, and the Amethyst Genuine has sparkle both in the heavily pigmented and the lighter pigmented types of washes. And this is a terribly painted chart, I apologize for that, but I was tired. But I wanted you to see that when you mix that purple with any of the other colors, and you can see in the previous video how I did this chart, it carries the glitter with it, so it will make other colors sparkle if you get one of these and mix it with it. I'd like to show you a sample painting. It's just going to be a quick speed painting, and I'll talk through it a little bit, but I wanted you to see the kinds of colors that you would get from the Primatex. These are granulated colors in many cases. A lot of them are just much more naturalistic colors, but they're a little duller than you might get out of other pigments. So other ones might be brighter, stronger, flatter, that sort of thing. But these will give you a really, I don't know, it, it feels to me like a gritty look. There's just something about them that I, I find really appealing. So that's one of the reasons why I've invested in a lot of the Primatex, because I really loved the look that they have here. So I've painted a little bit of rhodonite for the, the undercoat on the grapes, a little bit of Mayan blue in the background, and then a little jadeite just to start the leaves out a little bit. I'm going in now with the amethyst. Now this is the one that has a little bit of glitter in it. And as I'm looking at it from an angle and up close and everything, I can't really see the glitter until it dries. 
And if you get some of these colors, don't worry if, you, if it doesn't immediately show up to your eye. Once it dries, if it's one of the paints that has glitter in it, it will show up definitely and you'll be able to see it. So um, that's one of the things that I discovered about them. And they tend to have a little more of a bold glitter look when there's darker color, when it's richer color. If it's really soft and pale, it's super subtle. So I'm going in with a little bit of dry brush and then throwing in a little bit of water to blend a few things to add some definition to the grapes and keeping it as loose as I can. If you know me and my art here on my channel, I struggle with loose. So watercolor has been a real wonderful exercise for me in just loosening up the creative muscles and letting myself get crazy and, and paint. So I'm mixing in a little more of the pinkish color, the rhodonite because I wanted these to have that, that really bright color as well and show you, you can get that. The rhodonite is the only like really, really bright color within the Primatex. The others are much more subtle types of, of colors. Now here I decided to add a little bit of brown in there too, because the Piemontite, I think it's called, <laughs> um, I thought would add a little bit of that grittiness to it. If I mix a little bit of that with the green, I'm only mixing them really on the paper. As you can see, I'm not mixing a whole lot on my palette. So I wanted to just give you an idea of what these pure colors can do, but you can definitely mix them, come up with all kinds of things. And I will be continuing to do more of that as time goes on. But just so you know, my channel is all different mediums. So I will be showing love to lots of mediums here, not just Daniel Smith and I'm not gonna be giving up all of my other watercolors as well. I wanna be able to play with all the toys because all the toys are so much fun. Now I'm taking little breaks in between here that I'm not showing you just for letting some of this air dry because there's some areas where I wanted the sharper detail like this and if I had put it over wet paint, it would all just mush out and bleed into the wet paint. So as I wanted to add more of this detail onto the leaves, it was helpful to wait until they were kind of dry. But I'm going in with the Piemontite and a little bit more of the Jadeite to add more detail on the leaves. Just give them a little more definition, a little more sharpness. And occasionally I'd hit it with my heat gun just to make sure things were good and dry before I started on my next layer. And now I wanted to add much more definition using the amethyst on the grapes and just add some heavier shadows and just kind of squinting at it as I paint, just so I can see which areas are have some definition and which ones are a little more on the mushy side and where I wanted to loosen it up at. There's part of me that wishes I had stopped at the last stage because I liked when it was even softer in terms of the shapes, but I liked the contrast, so I guess I'm glad I, I kept it going. And then I would occasionally stop and throw some paint spatters on there. But here you can see the actual glitter within the paint. It took me a bit to figure out how to film this so I could show you the actual glitter, but you can see how well it shows up when you're doing a painting itself, not just on swatches. So here are the two videos that were earlier in this series. If you missed out on those and you only landed on this one, you'd like to see more about the dot charts or making swatch charts for your watercolors. And then another watercolor video that's just for fun. And I will see you guys later on. Be sure to subscribe if you'd like more from me. And there's all kinds of information on my blog, including stills of all the charts and everything in these videos. Thank you much. Bye-bye.